And as um, I'm here to give some of my reflections, you know, I wanted to focus on one aspect of the conference and to bring us back to the theme of this year's conference, innovation and action to end the epidemic. Now, we have learned a great deal about innovation, and I think these sessions are a demonstration of how much amazing work is going on out there. The science base is solid. It is evolving, and great work is being done to expand our knowledge base. And as Marjorie Hill made us all proclaim yesterday, prevention works, and we know that. What about the action? So in my few minutes, I want to focus on a request for every single participant here in this room. And it is a fabulous and huge room, but I'm going to give you the homework. I want each and every participant over the next days and weeks to take action on a few very top priority issues as soon as possible. That's right, all of us in this room are going to have an opportunity to tap our inner lobbyist and do the work that we know that needs to be done to move our movement forward. So the first thing I want to say, and I have not heard nearly enough about this at this conference, the U.S. public health system is in trouble. Our ability to respond to this ep epidemic relies on federal, state, and local governmental public health partners. State and local public health is in crisis. And this crisis includes over 100 million in budget cuts in HIV AIDS programs so far, and that number is on the rise, and a workforce crisis that challenges our ability and capacity to get things done. There are hundreds of vacant positions in public health departments, and how many state and local public health officials in this room have furloughs and aren't allowed to go to work several days a month? We know you're there. There is no better example than what has recently happened in the state of California, where all that is left for HIV prevention is $9 million in federal funding for HIV prevention. What is gone is three times that amount, $32.9 million in state general revenue funds that were for HIV prevention. Overall, we know that federal funding is only a little more than half of all the prevention resources that are available for our national response. The state and local resources are clearly in jeopardy. And the first assignment for everyone in the room is to go home and make advocacy in your own backyard, in your own state, and in your own city a priority to fight to keep and increase the resources at the state and local level. Secondly, we can have all the evidence-based prevention interventions in the world, but if we can't bring them to scale, we will not be successful. We must advocate for the real needs of our programs. Two years ago, NASDAQ's prevention policy agenda called for a doubling of CDC's HIV prevention budget. Within the year, CDC's own professional judgment budget called for an increase of $878 million for HIV prevention. We all may think, oh, that's never going to happen. But let me remind us all, experience earlier this year with the stimulus bill, with cash for clunkers, with war funds for Afghanistan, experience suggests that money can be found when the national will is there. And our challenge is to find the champions in the Obama administration and on Capitol Hill who will fight to the finish for our programs. Right now, we are facing a very big difference in what is proposed in the House and Senate for the fiscal year 2010 appropriation for HIV prevention. There's $20 million more dollars in the House bill in the Senate bill. And so my second homework assignment and request for each and every one of you is to go home and contact your legislators and call for the passage of an appropriations bill that provides every penny for HIV prevention that was pro proposed by President Obama in his budget initiative. <clears throat> Third, and I only have five. Third, we've heard messages of support at this conference for continuation of the Ryan White program, which is in danger of sunsetting on September 30th of this year, just five weeks away. 
While we've heard words of support, we have yet to see any signs of action from this administration and this Congress. We must reach out to our governors, to our health departments, to our congressional delegations to keep the pressure on. Let's honor Senator Kennedy's legacy and call for the extension of the Ryan White program for the next three years before September 30th of this year. Fourth, the message regarding the need to stand up for health reform has come across loud and clear at this conference. However, what is getting lost in the discussion is a focus of the prevention provisions of the House and Senate bills. In addition to desperately needing to expand health insurance coverage to low-income people with HIV across the country and assure coverage for important clinical prevention services like HIV testing, we need to make sure that the final health reform bill signed into law by President Obama includes a dedicated funding stream for a public health prevention and wellness investment fund. There are provisions in both the House and Senate bills that would assure billions of dollars for public health programs, for CDC, for state and local governmental public health infrastructure, for community-based prevention. Very few voices are speaking out in support of these provisions. And I request that every one of you add this to your messaging around health reform. The best way to assure that we can ever attain the CDC professional judgment budget for HIV prevention is to keep those provisions in the final health reform legislation. Finally, a perspective I know is shared by many in the room. We expect and request that CDC be the national voice of HIV prevention here in the United States and speak loudly and clearly about what is known both about the epidemic and about what is likely to be most effective in reducing new infections here at home. Now what does that mean to me? It means fighting to lift the ban on federal funding for needle exchange programs and working within the government. We need to hear a strong signal of support from the Obama administration for lifting the ban and extending the reach of these programs. It means addressing stigma and discrimination wherever and where, wherever and whenever it occurs. It means figuring out how to adequately fund and target our response based on both race and risk. We are not doing enough to reach black gay men. We are not doing enough to reach Latino gay men. We are not doing enough to reach white gay men. We are not doing enough to meet Asian, Pacific Island, Alaska Native, and Native American gay men. I think you catch my drift. I don't think we can end the epidemic in this country until we value and fight for the lives of all gay men. And I ask you to join me in that fight. And then my last request for CDC is to truly value our partnership and all of our respective roles and responsibilities in joining the fight to end the epidemic here at home. It cannot be accomplished without state and local governmental public health. Their funding, their accountability, their integration, their innovation, all of these things largely occur at the state and local level. It cannot be done without our national HIV AIDS organizations, researchers, community-based organizations, and the very clear and constant voices of people living with HIV across the country. It is my hope that in this new era, CDC will unify us, not divide us, that they will help us collaborate and bring a new level of transparency to HIV prevention here in the United States. Thank you very much.